this video is going to do some simple, uh, not complicated calculations on an estimate for what's called the habitable zone, the place where the temperature of a planet would be uh, such that water would exist in a liquid state. So uh, we're looking for temperatures in the range of 0 Celsius to 100 Celsius between the freezing point of water and the boiling point of water. And our energy supply is the sun. So the sun sends light, which carries energy, to the planet. And the planet is also radiating energy back out into space. And we get an equilibrium set up, a balance of the power absorbed and the power emitted by the, uh, by the planet. So at the Earth, we have something called the solar constant that has a value of 1368 watts per square meter. And we're going to let the energy of the uh, sun uh, be absorbed by the cross-sectional area of the planet. And then the planet will uh, radiate back into space power, assuming it's a black body. So we're not going to do too many complications. We will account for what's called the albedo of a, of a planet. And the albedo is the fraction of light that's reflected and not absorbed. The fraction of light that's reflected and not absorbed. And we're searching for a distance away from the sun. We are going to account for an atmosphere of the planet. So this would be appropriate for the Earth. The Earth's average temperature is uh, higher than it would be if the Earth was just bare rock. Um, the atmosphere raises our temperature by about 30 degrees Celsius. This is not a small matter. It's about 45 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. If I'm doing my, no, it's 54 degrees Fahrenheit. If I'm doing my calculations in my head correctly, dangerous. But let's get started here. We want uh, the solar constant at some place in our, our solar system. Uh, it's, this is 1368 watts per square meter at the Earth. Well, the sun is sending off light in all directions, of course. And this is expanding out into a sphere that energy is going out into a sphere around the sun. At the place where the Earth is, we have 1368 watts per square meter. What if we were twice as far away as the Earth? What do you think the solar constant would be if we were twice as far away? Well, this same energy per second gets spread out over a bigger sphere. I'm not going to draw the whole sphere here, but it gets spread out over a bigger sphere. The area of the sphere is calculated with 4 pi r squared, 4 pi r squared. So if we're at the Earth, let's say 1 AU away from the sun, one astronomical unit, and then we're considering some planet that's 2 AUs away from the sun, how large will the area be? when we're two AUs away. Well, the area goes by the square of the radius. So we're going to have four times more area. And the energy of the sun is diluted. It's going to be smaller by a factor of four. So at the planet, I'll call it SC for solar constant. The solar constant is going to be 1368 watts per square meter divided by, I'm going to use x squared, where x is in astronomical units. x is in astronomical units. So if we're at the Earth, x is 1. We get 1368 watts per square meter. If x is 2, 2 AUs, then we're going to divide this by 4. So this gets us a measure of how much power per square meter is available to the planet. And now it's time for me to uh, just go ahead and develop an equation here. At equilibrium on the planet, the power uh, in equals the power out. 
the power that's absorbed, the joules per second that are absorbed at the surface of the planet, equals the joules per second that are emitted by the planet and will have equilibrium temperature. If there's less power going out, if the temperature of the planet is lower, then the temperature will increase because it's receiving more energy than it's emitting. The energy is going to lead to an increase in the surface temperature. If the surface temperature is higher, um, then it will emit more energy than equilibrium value and the temperature will come back down. So this is our basic relationship. The amount of joules per second being absorbed equals the amount of joules per second being radiated by the planet. That's at equilibrium. So let's see what this looks like for an equation, including the effect of the albedo. So at the planet, we have a solar constant of 1368 watts per square meter divided by x squared. We're going to be searching for these x values. One x will be where the equilibrium temperature is 0 Celsius. Another will be where it's 100 degrees Celsius. Not all of that gets absorbed and is effective at uh, building up the temperature of the surface. So we have to do 1 minus uh, 0 0.3, where again this is the albedo. This is the percent or fraction, fraction here, 30 percent, gets reflected and not absorbed. So that's the, uh, the power per square meter that's coming into the surface of the planet. Where does this uh, power get absorbed? How many square meters? Well, this is not a real planet, but uh, imagine this is round. And uh, we'll do this side where the, uh, the sun is over here. Uh, half of the sphere of the planet is receiving energy and really just the cross-sectional area can be used. This gives us the number of meters squared. So it's like a circle, a sphere projected facing the sun. It's just pi r squared. It's not the full um, area of the planet and it's not half of the uh, area of the sphere. It's just pi r squared. So that's our uh, formula now for how much uh, power gets absorbed um, at the planet. Now the power that's going out, we use the relationship for a black body, sigma times area times t to the fourth gives us a calculation for a black body of the power that's emitted. Sigma is Stefan's constant, so 5.67 times 10 to the minus 8. If we consider this planet to be rotating rapidly, so the backside does not cool off much when it's away from the sun. If it's rotating rapidly, I'm going to make that assumption. Then the whole surface area of the planet will be about at the same temperature will be about the same temperature. So the area that's emitting radiation, this is the area of a sphere, 4 pi r squared. And then we have temperature to the fourth power. I'm going to just put in t to the fourth power here. So our goal is to solve for x. How far away from the sun are we in astronomical units? And we're going to do it twice. Once when t is uh, the Kelvin number that is uh, zero degrees Celsius, and I'll go ahead and write those up here. To get Kelvin, I add 273 to the Celsius number. So the one Kelvin number we're going to calculate for is 273 Kelvin, and the other one will be 373, and we'll get two different, of course, two different x values when we uh, when we do that. So we can do some simplification before we calculate. It's always a good idea. Pi r squared is on both sides. This factor of 4 does not cancel, but if I want to know how I'm going to calculate x squared, I'm going to multiply both sides by x squared. I'm going to divide both sides by Stefan's constant, by the 4, and by t to the fourth. And when I do that, um, it'll look like this. So 1368, I'm going to drop the units. We've already discussed those. Uh, 0.7 here, I've got a factor of 4, I have Stefan's constant, and everything's in standard metric units. 
and we have t to the fourth power, and that's going to be x squared. So our solar constant at the Earth divided by x squared gets us the solar constant at the planet, but we want to solve for the x squared, so I've moved it off to the right. I've gone ahead and assumed that both of these planets are going to have an albedo of uh, 0.3, so reduce that to 0.7. The pi r squared's canceled on both sides. I'm dividing both sides by 4, Stefan's constant, and t to the fourth. So it's time for, uh, for calculations. For the case of uh, the freezing point of water, so if t is 273 Kelvin, you should uh, pause now and go ahead and put in 273, square it twice if you don't have an arbitrary power button on your calculator. Uh, t to the fourth is the same as t squared times t squared. So take the 273, square it twice, and multiply across this denominator, get the number for the numerator, and I came up with a value of 0 0.76, and I'm rounding, because this is albedo is an approximation, um, and I get 0.76 is our uh, x squared, and then taking the square root of both sides, I find that x is 0 0.87 AU. For the case of uh, 373, I now use 373 and square it twice, complete that calculation, and I came up with 0 0.218 is x squared, or the x is 0.47 AU. Is it reasonable that x is smaller if I'm going for a higher temperature on the surface? Yes, closer to the sun will produce a higher surface temperature. Notice that both of these are inside the position where the Earth is located. Both are inside. What's going on here? Well, I've not yet accounted for the fact that our atmosphere uh, bumps up our temperature by 30 degrees. So. Really, what I need to do is repeat this calculation, um, only searching for this black body effect of 243 Kelvin and 343 Kelvin, <coughs> and letting the uh, atmosphere greenhouse effect raise the temperature up to the necessary 0 Celsius and 100 Celsius numbers for our calculation. So again, using the same equation here, finding the place where the black body equilibrium temperature would be 243 Kelvin. I put 243 here, square it twice, and complete the calculation. And I come up with 1.21 is x squared, or x is 1.1 AU. And the other case, 0 0.305 is x squared, and x equals 0 0.55 AUs. And now the Earth is inside this range of values. The Earth has a distance of one astronomical unit. And this is an estimate. It's just roughly showing you uh, where the planet with an atmosphere that has a greenhouse effect that ups the average temperature by 30 degrees Celsius. And I'm skipping many, many factors in here. This is just a crude estimate of where a habitable zone might uh, be located. Um, but using the... Uh, amount of energy we get from the sun per second per square meter using the uh, freezing and boiling points of water, using an estimate for how much light gets reflected, and if you want to change and vary how much light gets reflected, don't use as much greenhouse effect, uh, you can make your own calculations as to where the habitable zone might be or for a brighter star if there's more... Uh, uh, energy available for the star, see how that affects the uh, locations of the habitable zone. But without a greenhouse effect, we would need to be roughly an estimate uh, between 0.47 and 0.87 astronomical units to have liquid water. With a greenhouse effect, we get between 0.55 and 1.1 astronomical units for the uh, extent of the habitable zone. So. 
ask your instructor if you have questions on that and uh, perhaps read a book.